Hello friends, welcome back to That'll Do Garage. I meet you today with a heavy heart. The time has come to stop kidding myself. I have to put an oil pump in this car. We've tried everything. I had lots of great ideas. We cleaned this, we checked that. I changed the oil viscosity. I crossed my fingers, nothing worked. So it's time to bite the bullet and do it. I have been hopefully procrastinating and dreading this job since before I bought the car. <laughs> but we've come to this point and I'm going to be an adult about it and get to work. <laughs> so the reason I'm doing an oil pump is because periodically we get the low oil pressure light to come on. You might drive the car for 30 minutes or 45 miles or something and it's fine and then it just randomly comes on. Um, I tried hooking up a mechanical gauge and things didn't go so well. I don't know if I got a really low quality gauge or if it actually has that messed up of oil pressure, but I wasn't really able to measure it. Um, I did replace the switch. And like I said, I changed the oil viscosity and I think that helped a little bit. It's intermittent now. It was on all the time, but yeah, so it's, it's time to do it and I can't delay anymore. Um, right now it's coming on. Like if my son drives to work, it's probably seven miles there and seven miles back and it will come on once. And it seems to be always after he gets off the freeway turns into our neighborhood and it becomes like a 30 mile an hour zone and there's a corner. So I'm not sure if that matters or not, but it seems like when he slows down and goes around a corner, maybe the oil sloshes to one side or I don't know what happens, but um, that's when it comes on. So it's time to do it. I'm guessing this will take me something like 10 to 12 hours over the weekend here. Uh, don't worry, this won't be a 12 hour video. I'll try to, you know, just include some key milestones here and show you what I struggled with, but nobody wants to watch me deal with this drama. So anyway, here we go. I hope you enjoy it. Well, don't feel too bad for me. Um, I did know this was a possibility when I bought the car, right? And that's part of the reason I got a good price for it is this drama was going on. So I got it up in the air right now <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to just give you a quick peek of what's in store. So I'll show you from the bottom, but basically we have to remove the subframe to drop the oil pan so I can drop the oil pump. Uh, and that means we're going to remove the support for everything you see here. Basically, this engine is bolted to the subframe and the subframe is bolted to the bottom of the car. Um, so what we're gonna have to do is find a way to support this while we drop the subframe. And I'm probably gonna just come up with some homemade two by six over there in the corner, set it here and kind of build a little bridge like that. And then just use a ratchet strap from the two by six down to the engine just to support the front end. The rear end should be supported because I'm not going to actually um, remove the subframe. I'm just going to lower it. That's my intent anyway, based on the one YouTube video I watched 15 minutes of. So mostly an expert now, but um, so that's the plan. And let me show you from underneath. So here's our oil pump. I'm sorry, oil pan, dummy. I wish that was the oil pump on the bottom of the engine. And this is an AC line. This is the front sway bar. That'll all come off just fine, but you notice the oil pan extends back here. So this is the subframe that is gonna be in the way. 
And you know, that's important for two reasons. One, it's, it's supporting the engine. So I told you that already. But then the other thing is it's supporting all this suspension geometry over here. And we're gonna lower this thing down. We're gonna lower the subframe down. We're gonna leave the back end bolted, lower the front end, and it's gonna tilt down so we can get this oil pan out. But that's potentially gonna mess with the alignment um, and the geometry up here. So I'm gonna have to be careful. I'm probably gonna do a bunch of, you know, outlining things in a Sharpie before I lower it. And that way I can try to get it back to approximately where it was. But ultimately the right answer here is it needs an alignment after I do this. Or we might get some bad tire wear. So I'm gonna just start plugging away here. I don't mind telling you I'm a bit overwhelmed. This is a good sized job and you know, I have other stuff going on, but um, it shouldn't be too bad. Oh, and by the way, oil pump, brand new, um, $1,899.99 from ECS Tuning or something like that. Um, that's for a genuine Audi one. And it might shock you to learn that is not what I purchased. I ordered a used oil pump off of eBay for 175 bucks. So that's a pretty good uh, markup. Anyway, hopefully it works out okay. We've got a lot of work to do, better get started. Sometimes my red neckedness astounds even me. Got my two by six setup going on here. Pretty sweet, right? They make special tools for this, you know, like Ford sells one through OTC and it's like a dealer tool and I'm sure it's $11 million. I'm sure Snap-on has options. Anyway, I had a couple of sticks of lumber laying around, ratchet strap holding up the engine. So this is uh, coming along just fine. Get you an update here on the bottom. I went ahead and removed the AC compressor, and yes, it is hanging by the hoses, which I'm not wild about, but I like that a lot more than trying to discharge the AC system and start over with that debacle. So, got that removed, got the sway bar loose, I think that'll be fine. I'm gonna take the SERP belt off for the AC, obviously. A couple of electrical connections. What did I just do? Oh, there was a, in this region, there was a mount between this structural support and the oil pan. So I took that off and it's getting to the point where it's not super far away now. You can kind of see what the oil pan looks like. Goes back there a bit. The other thing I did with these motor mounts, I took the nuts off here on both sides. And then I jacked up on my ratchet strap until I could see there's a gap here. So now I know that the weight is on the ratchet strap, not on the engine hoist or the engine's mount. So the next thing I'm going to do, there's one over here. And there's an aluminum bracket at the bottom. And over here there's an aluminum bracket at the bottom. So I'm going to unbolt those and that will let me lower this front subframe, I think. And once I get that lowered, I, I think that's just about the last thing I'll have to deal with. So I'm expecting a lot of trouble and a big fight to get that subframe lowered. But anyway, things are going well so far, knock on wood.
I lowered down the mounts back there on both sides and she dropped down I don't know two or three inches I still don't know if it's enough like I can get my whole fist in there maybe that's enough we'll see just working on taking all these bolts out now from the oil pan and there's some funny business going on back here there's bolts going every which direction and according to the YouTube video there's actually bolts like inside the transmission bell housing or something I'm not really sure but I'll just keep plugging away here and we'll see how it goes well that wasn't too bad this is the oil pickup and the oil pump assembly gear driven here so i have to figure out that, how that works somehow this interacts with the crank probably and has a chain drive i think the maybe the most difficult part was two bell housing bolts not bell housing bolts two oil pan bolts that are in the bell housing one of them was here and the other one was i think like right here in a hole in the oil pan so don't forget about those if you're doing this job so now i gotta figure out how to get this thing off should be a piece of cake new parts showed up from ebay just want to show you what i got here this is like the tensioner guide assembly for the chain that runs this so there's two gears that go on the front here it's kind of like that and then the chain runs up and around the crank and that device keeps out all the slack so this little guy over on the right side is the oil pump that's it this is the oil pump the rest of this is all balance shaft assembly which i'll show you in a second but just right here is the oil pump and it works by um it's chain driven up here let me show you the back side here so this is the back side of the oil pump there would be a tube right here with the pickup tube that goes down into the oil and it sucks tube up oil up there like a straw flows in there and then there's two rotating pieces that come together and that produces the well it tries to compress the fluid and then it shoots it out through the top here to the rest of the engine and distributes all to all the wear surfaces up in the engine and then it just rains back down into the oil pan and gets sucked up again so that's kind of how the oil pump system works the rest of this mechanism is all balance shaft assembly which uh the the 1.8 turbos they don't have this balance shaft mechanism i'm, I'm pretty sure and the two liters do so this is one of the design enhancements, I guess you could say, of the engine. So this is chain-driven oil pump, and this is chain-driven balance shaft. And you can just kind of see what happens as I rotate that. Basically, there's two weights back there revolving. And when those weights go down, a piston goes up, and vice versa. So it just offsets a bit of the, uh, you know, the, the vibration. Makes the engine just a little bit smoother. I guess these wear out um, and then they they kind of when they wear out they have large clearances and then that can also be a reason for a loss of oil pressure because too much oil is just flowing right through there so some of the dudes that run higher performance engines will actually delete these balance shafts um, I think it lets the engine rev faster or rev higher something like that less rotating mass what I'm struggling with right now is this gear 
you know, I've got that triangular um, spacer kind of up in here and it's holding the chain tight. And I'm pretty sure the way that you take the chain off is you just take this bolt out, which then lets the gear come off. But this bolt on the oil pump in the car, it's kind of stripped out and damaged. Can't get my socket in there. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna get that out yet. All right, here we are, finally got it off. I did just very carefully take this bolt out and take the gear off and then the rest of it came apart. You can kind of see the chain is just hanging off the crank right now, no big deal. But I do need to be careful because the sequence from the crank and the chain and this balance shaft has to be just right because you need these weights in time with the rest of the rotation of the engine. So I have yet to figure out how I'm going to do that. But I did get this gear off. I took the uh, oil pickup tube off. I'm going to clean all this stuff up before I reassemble. But I wanted to show you guys I did find, I was looking at this balance shaft assembly and check this out. ton of wear right there and I'm wondering I mean so that that's definitely worn out the other side isn't so bad but that's gonna produce metal flakes or fragrant um, not fragrance you know uh, flakes and dust and fragments that's the word I was looking for um, and, and that's gonna eventually make its way through the whole engine. So that's not good um, I mean, it's a good thing. We're replacing it because when I check the other the other uh, Pump it's totally tight there. So that's not supposed to be like that and what that means is This mechanism has been through some hard times and you know, I don't know if it's the lack of oil pressure or previous the work that happened on this engine it's just been tough for for this assembly. So That's uh, it's a good thing and a bad thing. You know, it's good that I can find a problem But that probably means that a lot of stuff that's still on the engine has had some hard times, too. So It's I don't know. It's good and bad. It's bittersweet, I guess <laughs> So I'm gonna carry on um, Disassembling this and cleaning this and making sure everything from here matches here there's a couple little things i have to do like transfer these dowel pins um these are supposed to be present over here and they're not but that's probably about it just comparing these pumps well balance shaft assembly side by side you can really see how bad this is here this is the good one nice and tight there's really no movement there at all check that out Look at that hole. You can just see how much it can wiggle. That's terrible. So that's going to produce a lot of aluminum shavings from, from this area. And it's probably going to cause a vibration and some noise. I don't know if, I mean, I don't know if that would mean crappy oil pressure because it's, it's flowing. There's such a higher amount of clearance there than they're supposed to be. I mean, potentially that could be the root of my oil pressure issue because that's going to flow so much more oil through it than it's supposed to. So cross your fingers. I'm trying to see down in here in the oil pump. It's really hard to see anywhere. Both of them have like just the faintest scoring on the front on the gears and I feel like that's probably okay I can't really feel any difference in play but like that could be enough to be the root cause of my oil pressure issue because you can get so much more oil through that than you can through that but we'll see I sure hope so did my comparison of these parts to this kind of spacer gasket baffle looking thing um, and they are exactly the same because I don't know what's causing my oil pressure I'm gonna re 
and I'm going to use as much new as I can. So even though there's probably nothing wrong with this or this, and it has nothing to do with building oil pressure, I'm still going to swap these in um, just to change as many things as I can. So really everything looks okay. I swapped over those dowel pins. Um, I just, I still need to figure out the timing of the weights in relation to the piston. It's probably going to be something like cylinder four at top dead center. These weights need to be down, something like that. So then I'll just pull cylinder four spark plug out, make sure I'm at top dead center, put a mark on the outside of this gear. So I know when the weights are down, something like that. Um, and then clean up the block and put stuff back together. <laughs> Sounds pretty easy, right? Just get started. Okay, so I spent some time on the interwebs and I found out this is the sprocket that drives the balance shafts. There's a tiny mark right there. And that tiny mark is supposed to line up with this hole. Pretty sure it's that hole. But that also correlates with when the weights are at the bottom of their, their cycle. So that's where you want this. And the engine is supposed to be number one cylinder at top dead center. So I'm gonna pull this coil and spark plug and just roll the engine over until my number one cylinder is at top dead center. I'm going to put that just like that, and that should be it. Feeling pretty good about this parts washer. Got it as a gift. Picked up some uh, degreaser from Harbor Freight. Check out this oil pan. Oh, sparkly clean, right? Looks like it's brand new. It makes me feel good about putting it back on the car. I know my RTV is going to seal. I know. I got all the sludge out of the corners, you know. Pretty cool. cooking right along here I got the pump back in and then I struggled to get the tensioner and chain on um, so I ended up loosening the pump hardware so it could slide a little bit and then I could put this on um, there's a tiny hole 
right here that I put a little, once you collapse the spring and tensioner, put a little pin in there and that held it in the collapse state so that you could put everything back together. And then I indexed my mark, I think it was here with that important hole. Put my number one piston at top dead center. It was, it was pretty close. I, I feel like that was 95% accurate. So I'm a little worried about that 5%, but um, who knows. So this is all back in and tight. All the hardware on the pump is tight. So now I'm just doing a final cleanup of any oil residue. And then I'm gonna move on to refitting the oil pan. And that just seals with a little RTV uh, gasket, nothing special. Moving right along, we got our AC compressor back in, serpentine belt back on, electrical connections, put this uh, subframe mounting bracket back in place, and I'm getting ready to do the other side right now. Back side is still loose, so I'll have to be tightened too, but no real issues, looking good. Well, that's it, everything's back together. Sway bar, engine mounts, subframe, all reassembled. I'm just gonna change the oil filter, put this thing on the ground, dump some oil in it, and cross my fingers. Well, I just got back from about a 20 minute test drive. The light did not come on. So I think maybe we did uh, fix this one, hopefully. Um, my, my guess is that the excess clearance in that balance shaft was just enough to cause the um, oil pump to be not able to keep up. Um, that's my guess. And it was definitely causing a lot of particles when I changed the filter filter had about a thousand miles on it and there was a ton of uh really fine dust in there so maybe that was it i don't know but that's kind of the last thing i need to fix on this car i'm going to give it back to my son and hopefully he drives it for a year with no problems we'll see but i think that's going to be it for today hope you enjoyed the video please remember to like comment and subscribe thanks for watching